Hi, Pete here from Club Engineer. In the previous talk through, we wrote the code that made the decision whether to turn left or right based on the presence of a green turn hint. Now it's time to put all the pieces we've written together into a single program to make the robot turn left or right and continue down the course. First of all, let's summarise the pieces that we have. We have a two sensor line following program that's blindingly fast. It also has a decision point inside the code where the robot detects the presence of the green hint. This allows us to execute the code to make the decision whether to turn left or right. We have the code that will look at the light sensors and make the decision whether to turn left or right. We have the code that will use the left hand light sensor and follow the left hand side of the line. We also have the code that will use the right hand light sensor to follow the right hand side of the line. Now, to put these pieces together. First of all, our two sensor line following program doesn't need any changes because it already has the detect green my block embedded in the location where the robot's going to be over the green hit turn hint. So I'll double click on the detect green. What we have to do now is replace the sound block that says left and the sound block that says right with code that actually makes the robot use the left and the right hand light sensors to navigate the turn hint. So we're going to create two new my blocks. Select the sound block that we have set to say left, go to edit, make a new my block. Again we'll give it a good name, we'll turn, call it turn left on green. Turn left on green, capital T, capital L, capital O, capital G. Click finish. I'm just going to move it off and back on to tidy things up. I'm going to do the same thing with the sound block that's saying right. I select it, I go to edit, make a new my block, give it a good name, turn right on green. Capital T, capital R, capital O, capital G, no spaces. Click finish. Again I'll move it off the sequence beam and back on to tidy things up. Now I'm going to double click on the turn left on green my block and implement the code. I'll move things around a bit to tidy up the presentation. I'm going to open our turn left on green single sensor program. Single sensor hyphen left. Here's the code we want to use. I'm going to copy this over and paste it into the my block. So I select the external loop block copy it to the clipboard with control C, go to our turn left on green my block, paste it in with control V and link it up to the sequence beam. I'll leave the sound block in place for the time being for debugging purposes. I'm going to do the same thing to the turn right my block. I go back to the detect green my block, I'm going to double click on the turn right my block, move things around to tidy up the presentation, open the single sensor turn right program, select the external loop block, copy it to the clipboard, go back to the right hand turn my block, paste the code in from the clipboard, drop the loop block back on the sequence beam. We have a few more things to do to finalise this. First of all, we don't need the single sensor right program anymore, so I'll close that off. And we don't need the single sensor left program anymore, so I'll close that off. We'll check we have the port selection correct. And note that uh, on this robot, the left hand light sensor is on port 4. So we're going to check the left hand turn is actually using the light sensor on port 4, 
not on port 1. Good. Uh, what else have we got to, chat to uh, tidy up? This loop block here is set to loop indefinitely. We don't want that, because if we left it like this, at the first sight of a turn hint, the robot would slip into left hand turn mode and would continue using a single sensor for the rest of the course, and that would be very, very slow. So we want this to only run for a short time, just long enough for the robot to get over the hint. And I'm suggesting somewhere between 1 and 2 seconds would be about right. So let's set the duration to 1.5 seconds. We'll do the same thing for the turn right code. We don't want this loop block to run forever. So we'll set it to run for just 1.5 seconds. Two more things to tidy up. First of all, in the detect green my block, we have this block here that stops the execution of the program. Of course, we don't want that anymore because once we've made the decision to turn left or right, we want the program to resume line following. So, once it's turned left or right, the execution will come off the end of this sequence beam and will go back to here where it called the detect green my block. Finally, we need to set the light thresholds that the switch block for turn left and the switch block for turn right are using. So we'll open our calibration spreadsheet and double check the threshold values. Sensor 1 needs to turn based on a value of 57. Sensor 1 needs to turn based on a value of 57 and sensor 4 needs to turn based on a value of 60. Good! That completes all the changes we need to make. Now we'll compile, download and run this program and see how it performs on the RoboCup Rescue course. The robot detects the first of the left hand hints goes into single line following mode, it detects the second of the left hand hints. You can see the light sensor on the right flickering off. It detects the first of the right hand hints and it detects and it detects the second of the right hand hints. The robot gets over the gentle square turn. The robot gets over the more aggressive square turn. The robot gets over the sweeping bend. So I think we'll call that success. It's been quite a marathon, hasn't it? Getting the turn hints working with five talk throughs dedicated to that single task. Have a shot at implementing that and fine tuning your robot and build yourself a fairly complicated course to test things on. And when you're done, we'll come back and have a look at a physical barrier I'm thinking perhaps the water tower could be our next challenge. Talk to you when you've implemented Turn on Green. The material we're covering in these talk throughs is hard and sometimes, in spite of your best effort, you may find that you're stuck. Often, it only takes a small amount of face-to-face -face help to get you back on track. If you think you'd benefit from face-to-face -face help, then open your web browser and type clubengineer.org slash help. You'll see a list of times and places where face-to-face -face help is available. At these sessions, you'll get all the help you need to get back on track. You may also meet like-minded young engineers such as yourself for collaborating on projects down the track. Face-to-face -face sessions are run over the school holidays and after school during term time. They're available for all ages from years 5 to year 12. We also run face-to-face -face sessions for teachers and mentors. We'd love to meet you at one of these sessions and learn what you have been building.